the Lord a shout of praise. Oh, you see, we are triumphant in battle. We are victorious in God is most high over all the earth. Oh, yes. Jesus has conquered. Yes, yes. Satan is defeated. The enemy is under my feet. So I will shout with a voice of triumph. I'm going to shout with a voice of praise. Oh, Say it is defeated. The enemy is under my feet. 
Lord, a shout of praise. So we will shout.
something here tonight yes, that all struck wonder. Yes, God. All at the mention of his name. Jesus, your name is power. Reach out and touch God is breath and it's our living water. God's in this house to touch Such your heart tonight and your spirit. Mystery. Hallelujah. Yeah. In that dry place, in that harsh place. Hallelujah. That land of nothing going on, but God wants to touch it tonight. Oh, come on, reach out to him.
Hallelujah. Did you enjoy the worship service? Hallelujah. Did you feel the Spirit of the Lord as He ministered to us tonight? Hallelujah. I tell you what, He's a tender God. You know that? He's in control. He's full of power. He's full of mercy. And He's got tender uh, mercies towards us. You know that? I tell you what, the Bible says that His mercy endures forever. You're not going to wear it out. It's not. You're not going to find the end of it. But his mercy is always going to be there for us. I tell you, I was lost and in sin. I was in that mari clay, and I should have been cast away. Jesus had no reason to even like me, let alone love me. You hear what I'm saying to, me, to you? He's a holy God. He's righteous. He don't have no need of me, but because I was just a, a you know a piece of dirt in the clay. But you know what he did? He said, "I love you." And because I love you, I'm going to give you a life. Yes. And I'm going to pull you up out of that mess. And I'm going to establish you. And I'm going to plant you. And I'm going to give you a life. And I'm going to give you a life that's yes. more abundant. Yes. And not only that, but I'm going to give you a privilege and an honor. And I'm going to give you a church to go to. And I'm going to come there in my spirit. And I'm going to visit you. And I'm going to lead and guide you into all the truths. And not only that, but I'm going to be there in the midst of the worship service. And I'm going to touch your hearts and make you whole. That's the kind of God we serve, and His name is Jesus. I mean, knows His name is Jesus. His name is power. It means power. I love that song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, again, it's great to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. He's a great God and greatly to be praised. If the offering takers will make their way to the front, we'll take up tonight's offering. Hallelujah. Sister Audrey, will you sing tonight? Give her a hand clap.
prayer and we've seen and we've seen and we've seen the Lord answer prayer after prayer after prayer. We watched him heal Trevor from cancer several years ago. We watched him come out of from that pit of sickness and the Lord deliver him from that. We watched him raise Sister Jean up from that car accident. We've seen her, the pictures of her in those turtle shells or whatever for your back and all that stuff. And we've seen God raise her up as though nothing had ever happened. Just like the word always said. And, and I was talking to a gentleman at work the other day a few uh, months ago that gentleman from Sparta came in, or came in here and he preached and there was a man at work his daughter had come home from school one day and she had to call him from the vehicle and have him and his her, her mother come and get them get her out of the car and something had attacked her body at school and she lost all motor skills she couldn't even walk or anything and why they put her in that car and let her drive home they never figured out because she could have had an accident killed herself uh, she couldn't even get out of the vehicle when she got to got to the house well they rushed her to the uh, hospital and everything and whatever had attacked her body the doctors had seen it before and I don't even know what the name of it was one of the big long things but that man come to work Wednesday and he said they told him that it's going to be several months it was going to take several months for her to even begin to feel normal in her body again because she was paralyzed from her neck down had no feeling, no function in her arms and her legs couldn't walk, couldn't roll over couldn't move, couldn't do nothing he said it's going to take several months for her to get feeling back and even longer after that for her to take physical therapy and things like that and I think it's been about a month ago maybe six weeks ago that gentleman from Sparta was here well, he told us that on Wednesday at work and I came in here and that gentleman preached and I got a prayer cloth and had him agree with, with us about healing for that young girl and I took it to work on Thursday and I asked that gentleman I said hey, do you know what this is do you have any idea what this stands for and he said no I ain't never seen one for so I explained to him what the prayer cloth was and where it started from and how Paul would give those handkerchiefs and things from his body and would take back to people for deliverance and things well he took me at my word about healing from that from the anointing that was in that thing he took it to the hospital and he hung it on her wall over top of her bed in that hospital room and she said what in the world's that so he explained to her what I said and he said this lady from work said you know she heard about your problem and she went to church and had the whole church pray over you and she said well bless her heart I appreciate that you know and she didn't have no understanding at that time but it, they took me at my word that God was in it and I want you to know he came to work Friday and I asked him how she was doing this has been about six weeks ago and he said you can't even tell anything happened to her he said she came out of that and said the doctors are like how in the world how in the world they don't even know what but there is power in prayer God answers God changes God moves God delivers God sets free you just gotta hold your faith and keep praying you know Daniel prayed for 21 days 21 days he went and he prayed every day every day brought his petition for the Lord it didn't look like God had heard or seen anything but the enemy was blocking that prayer blocking that answer he was blocking that answer and there was a there was an angel on the way with that answer so just know tonight there's an answer coming to you there's an angel on the way with your answer just keep praying and just holding on and believing God because your answer is coming your answer is coming there's power in your prayers and God does hear you and he does answer I love the Lord hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 Brother Barney, stand and testify tonight. Give him a hand clap. Sister Phyllis, will you stand and testify? Give her a hand clap. Amen. Amen. Brother Don, stand and testify tonight. Give him a hand clap.
Amen, amen. I mean, no solid rock is all about Jesus tonight. I mean, we're all about Jesus. You know, I, we can't heal a fly. We can't do too much of nothing in ourselves. But when the Lord shows up, you know that? We can, take, we can take and point people to the Lord, point them to the cross, and make a difference in their lives. That's why we're the place where lives are changed. And it's all about Jesus here. Stand to your feet with me one more time. Let's give Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a great God and greatly to be praised. I'm just looking forward to the Word of God, the anointed Word of God. Help me make welcome our pastor, Pastor Wayne Keith. Give him a hand clap. Well, give the Lord a good hand if you love him right now. Come on. Hallelujah. Turn around, smile at somebody, and shake their hand. Tell them, say, good to see you in the house of the Lord. Kidney. Kidney. Well, I was driving home one Friday when commotion caught my ear. In a field, the crowd was gathered. How I heard them yell and cheer. Asked a man, why are you excited? I just don't understand. Someone said, man, you're not with it. We're just football fans. So I drove a little further and I saw another crowd. They were dancing, they were swaying. I heard music playing loud. Ask a man, why are you excited? I just don't understand. Someone said, man, you're not with it. We're just rock music fans. So I went to church that Sunday and I heard that preacher say, Jesus gave me life. And he's coming back someday So I started getting happy How I shouted, how I cried Someone said, don't get excited Oh, but back. this was my reply And I'm a Jesus fan I'm a Jesus fan When I think about God's mercy I just got to lift my hands So now when you hear me shouting You don't have to understand I can't help but get excited I'm a Jesus fan well, I'm a Jesus fan, I'm a Jesus fan, when I think about God's mercy, I just got to live my How many does tonight? So now when you hear me shout it, don't have to understand, I can't help but get excited, I'm a Jesus fan. We'll give the Lord a shout of praise if you a Jesus fan tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. If you can't remain standing with us tonight, open your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter number 15. Matthew chapter 15 tonight. Amen. Turn around and tell your neighbor God's a good God tonight. Amen. So I went to church that Sunday and I heard that preacher say, Jesus gave me life on Calvary and he's coming back someday. So I started getting happy. How I shouted, how I cried. Someone said, don't get excited. Oh, but this was my reply. Well, I'm a Jesus fan. I'm a Jesus fan. When I think about God's mercy, I just got to lift my hand. So now when you hear me shouting, don't have to understand. I can't help but get excited. I'm a Jesus fan. So I went to church that Sunday yes, and I heard that preacher say, Jesus gave his life on Calvary and he's coming back someday. So I started getting happy, how I shouted, how I cried. Someone said that she should do it. Oh, but this was my reply. Well, I'm a Jesus fan. I'm a Jesus fan. When I think about God's mercy, I just got to live my hand. So now we can hear me shouting. Don't have to understand. I can't help but get excited. I'm a Jesus fan. Well, give the Lord a shout of praise if you believe that one more time. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The book of Matthew tonight, chapter number 15 tonight. You that have your Bibles, amen. God began to deal me upon these scriptures. And I believe tonight that there is a word from heaven. Somebody shout amen. I believe there's a lot that we can learn from this story that is in the word of God tonight. And amen. There's so many things that Jesus did that if there was all it was written of, 
the world could contain the books. So what I'm saying that, amen, these things that was put in there, amen, is for you, mine and your examples, amen, to be encouraged, to be strengthened, amen, to, to get direction for tonight. How many knows that God wants to, is wanting and giving you direction? Amen. In the book of Matthew chapter 15 and verse number 21, Amen. God is a good God tonight. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. Amen. I ask you to continue to pray for the services. Pray for revival. Pray for the move of God. Pray for the lost to be saved. Amen. We're going to take this county for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He's a mighty good God. Then Jesus went hence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thy son of David. She addressed him as being the Messiah. She addressed him as being more than a prophet, more than than being a Pharisee or a Sadducee. She said, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Thy son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried, or she's making a spectacle, and we don't need that. Send her away. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He told us that I didn't come for you. Amen. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It's not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. She said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the, of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. She put herself in covenant with God right there. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Father, thank you for the reading of your word tonight. Thank you for speaking to every heart tonight. God, guide my words and let me speak as an oracle tonight. God, you know what's needed in this building. You know the hearts of every person. God, let there be something said, understood, discerned, that will touch every heart in here tonight. God, there's people that's hurting, people that don't know what to do and where to turn. God, there's people in this building tonight that needs your mighty hand of direction upon them tonight. We thank you for the praise and worship, the songs that were sung, everything that's been said up to this point. But right now, Lord, let there be a, a Holy Ghost anointing settle upon our ears and our eyes and our hearts. God, that we can hear and we can see and understand, God, what you want to do for us in this place tonight. We're going to praise you, going to thank you, and glorify you in Jesus' name. Let the church shout amen tonight. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Come on, give him a shout of praise. I want to preach a few minutes tonight, and when I want to look at this woman, and I, w I really want to, Amen. She was a, Ka uh, a Canaanite woman. She was a Syphonician. She was of a mixed race. And she was really an outcast. And Jesus had came to Israel because of the covenant plan that he had with Israel. And this woman came to him. And besides the man probably with the, 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 the uh, demoniac, there, this is the only Gentile woman at this point in time that Jesus ever touched or moved for. 
Amen. And when you look at this, I'm going to preach it in a minute, but I want to lay this out to you where you can see where I'm, where I'm going to. And she was outside of the covenant, and she had no rights to the healing power or the mercies of God. Because he only came to Israel at that point in time. Can I get a witness in here? But when Jesus died at Calvary, and the veil was rent, God was no longer in a temple, and he no longer came just unto the Jewish people. He come unto whosoever will, let him be. Amen. Aren't you glad tonight that you are a whosoever will? <laughs> Somebody will shout hallelujah here tonight. So, you know, sometimes we look at people and say, hey, amen, that's a good person. God ought to move for him. And that's a person I don't know if God should move for or not. But God looks at that person with the same compassion as he looks at the other person. Yeah. Amen. That's good news for me and you tonight. But when we begin to look at these scriptures and, amen, this woman came to Jesus. Go back to verse number, I believe it's 15, or, uh, 21 there. And when Jesus came to this war, when this woman came to Jesus and she began to talk to him, uh, amen, and, amen and, and the conversation got started. And really she made a spectacle, Lord, help me. Uh, Lord, the son of David, uh, help me tonight. Uh, my daughter is grievously vexed. Uh, she is uh, severely in pain. Uh, amen. She's severely suffering. Uh, I need you to touch her. Uh, I didn't come, uh, amen, just to play church. Uh, I came for a miracle. Uh, I came for something uh, I've got to have tonight. Uh, turn around and tell your neighbor, uh, why did you, what did you come for tonight? Uh, I came for a touch of heaven. Uh, I came to hear from heaven. Uh, I came for God uh, to do something uh, in my life tonight. Come on, give God another shout of praise. This child was grievously, she was very critical, she was very ill, amen. She was going to die, amen. And I'll tell you something, amen. Uh, uh, Nevaeh, can I use you, sweetheart? Can I use you? All right, amen. That baby was laying at home on a bed. Will you lay down, will you lay down for Brother Wayne? Right up here, lay down right up there. Amen. No, stretch on out. Stretch on out. There you go. Amen. Doing a good job, baby. Amen. And, and, and uh, can you imagine this? That mother felt the, the sorrow of this child. And she was at the place she could not do anything. She probably made her as comfortable as she could. Uh, maybe put a cold cloth on her head. Uh, amen. She would rub her and amen and tell her baby uh, everything going to be all right. Uh, but everything wasn't all right. Uh, but amen. She said uh, I may be an outcast. Uh, I may be a nobody. Uh, but I believe uh, that I can touch the master. I believe uh, that he's God uh, and he can be touched uh, with the feeling uh, of my infirmity. Uh, and she went to him uh, and she said it like this I want to title this uh, I didn't come to quit uh, I come to get a miracle uh, somebody ought to shout uh, I won't stop uh, I won't let up uh, there's a miracle uh, still in the making tonight in every what aspect you need tonight this woman came to, to Jesus and Jesus said unto her next verse please amen he said unto, look at this he answered her not a word. Then his disciples came. Said, boys, he looked at, they looked at Jesus and said, send her away. She's making a spectacle. She's crying after us. She's making us look bad. <laughs> you know, you go to church sometimes, somebody go, woo! People say, oh, I hope they don't make us look bad. <laughs> go ahead anyhow. Woo! But anyhow, amen, that baby laying home, vexed, critical with the devil. Amen, she recognized what it was. Anybody hear what I'm telling you tonight? How many times do you come to church and there's something that wants to stop you? How many, every time, every time you try to get ready for church, something wants to stop you? Every time you want to get victory, there's something to stop you. But I didn't come to quit. Whoa, somebody ought to shout yes. 
You say, preacher, I don't have no mind to quitting, uh, but I want you to know something. Uh, a lot of people tonight, uh, they just said, uh, I'm just going to cease from reaching out. Uh, amen. I, I'm going to abandon this mission. Uh, I'm just going to resign it. Uh, I'm going to let it go. Uh, but this mama said, uh, I may not be Jewish. Uh, I may be an outcast, uh, but you still got something uh, that you can give me. See, I don't care what your state is, God still got something to give you tonight. How many believes that by the grace of God? He answered and heard not a word, and the disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after me. Next verse. Amen. But he answered and said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of Israel. Now I'm going to tell you something, church. At a point in time, this woman should have said, listen, amen, I came, I tried, amen, but I'm just going home. You're not going to help me. How many times do we give up at the point of receiving our miracle? Satan has fought harder than he's ever fought to knock you out of the very blessing and the miracle of God. But tonight I'm going to put one more foot for her. I'm going to try one more day. I'm going to stand for one more hour. I'm going to hold on for another moment and say, God, I still believe you. Tell your neighbor he's a good God tonight. See, if Satan can, he'll stop you. If Satan can rob you, he'll rob you. If Satan can't, if Satan, if you let him, he'll lie to you and cheat you. But tonight we've got some folks in here that says, I'm not stopping. I'm not wearing my feelings on my shoulder tonight. Somebody shout amen. You can't insult me. You can't hurt me. You can't stop me. I come for a miracle and I'm going to get me a miracle. My little daughter is dying. She's vexed with the devil. And you've got the power. And you've got the anointing. Amen. I know that you're only sent to the Jewish people. I know I have no rights. Next verse. Amen. Then he says this. Amen. She came and worshiped him saying, Lord, you still got to help me. I know, but you got to help me. Reach out and touch your neighbor and tell him, I got to have some help tonight. And I refuse. Uh, get out of here, you foul spirits. Uh, you spirits of infirmity. Uh, you spirits of discouragement. Uh, you spirits of hindrances. Uh, you powers of hell uh, that come to rob and steal. Uh, but tonight, uh, there's anointing uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, telling somebody, uh, I come to get my miracle uh, and I refuse to quit uh, till I get it. Come on, church. He answered and said, listen, help me, Lord. She came and worshiped him. She worshiped him after all that was said. Most of us wouldn't be in the spirit by that time. <laughs> Most of us would go out in the foyer and sulk. Am I preaching to y'all? <laughs> Most of us would grab our... Luggage, we'd go home. I do not understand what people put in these things. It's not for me to understand. Somebody shout amen. Thought my Bible was heavy. Somebody shout amen. We'd go out in the foyer and we'd have a powwow. That preacher hurt my feelings. He don't have no right to do that. But Jesus was trying to show that crowd of people there something also. Them Jewish people felt like that God owed them something. Felt like if God wants to bless me, he'll come and knock me off of my seat. Honey, you could be sent to be an old person. Somebody shout amen. I got to make myself available. Amen. One day I was outside and amen, he came up a little cloud and he got the thunder and he got the lightning and my phone beeped and told me that, amen, that I was in the vicinity of lightning striking up to five miles. And I'm thinking, my Lord, here I'm out here and I've got stuff in my hands, amen, that's a conduit. Amen, it's just a lightning rod. 
You know what I begin to realize? If I don't get real, this something might hit this thing. Amen. But you know what? The devil don't like this here either because he knows God will honor that right there. Can I still get a witness in here? That baby's lying home. Uh, there's a battle between good and evil. Uh, there's a devil that don't want to let go. Uh, there's a power of hell uh, that says it'll never get it. Uh, amen, you've come to the wrong place. Uh, amen, you're supposed to stay at home. Uh, but you know what she said? Uh, she said, yes, Lord. Uh, I know everything you said is right. Uh, I know it was right uh, before I ever got here. Uh, but I came uh, knowing that you're more than able. Uh, I won't quit. Uh, I'm not going home. I'm not going to let up till I get it. Tell your neighbor I'm not going to let up till I get it. It's mine. My name is on it. God's prepared it for me. It's mine by the grace of God. Healing is mine. Victory is mine. Joy is mine. The authority of God's word is mine tonight. Tell your neighbor amen. Hallelujah. But most of us is like this right here. Found a set of keys out there in the parking lot the other day. Set of keys. Master lock keys. I don't know whose they are. Don't know what they fit. They may be a lock, they may be in a fit in a lock box. It's got a hundred thousand dollars in it. I wish I knowed it, but I don't. So I'm telling them what these keys fit. May not fit nothing. I don't know. I don't know whose they are. So if you've lost a set of keys after a while, you can claim them at a percentage. Somebody shout amen. But anyhow, going past all that, those keys are no good if you don't know what they're for. See, amen, without knowledge of God's word tonight, amen, you'll never receive what God has for you. What if those keys, what if those keys, amen, did fit something that was worth a million dollars? But I don't know it. You don't know what it is. These, these keys belong to anybody in here. Well, praise the Lord. I'm going to keep a looking. Somebody shout amen. But see, as long as we don't know, we're not going to get. But that woman came with a purpose. She came with a plan. She said, I may have difficulties. There may be a robbing devil down there. But my daughter, I need a miracle. And she's worth more, amen, than insults. She's worth more than rejection. She's worth more, amen, than you saying no. I know that the bread belongs to the children. But I also know... Amen. If I'm under the table, I have the right. Tell your neighbor you've got the right tonight. You've got the right. Whoa, somebody ought to shout yes. I'm not on the table no more. When he died at Calvary and rose again, I came from on the table to sit at the table with the master. Somebody ought to shout. I know it's mine. I know it's mine. I know it's mine tonight. Sometimes there's a battle to get it. You can sit down and fold your hands and resist and, and, and surrender. Why did Jesus do this woman this way? I often thought of that. I considered it. But he was trying to show them Jewish people something. He was trying to show everybody something. There was a great lesson in this tonight if you're willing to understand it. It's yours if you're willing to fight for it. Now, if you're going to sit down and just wait for God to come by and let the, the devil going to do everything he can to stop that. Sometimes you've got to get up by the grace of God, by his strength. And I, and, I, and I ask myself this question. I ask myself this question. What gave her the strength to keep on? Now, she should have went home saying, I tried. And God knows I tried. How many of you went home and said, God, I tried? She said, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. This thing is going to change today. I don't have a tomorrow if this don't change. Y'all preaching with me now? The baby. I believe she sees in her mind the fevered brow, the... the the, 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 the viciousness and the grievousness of this child's condition. 
I'm sure she tried doctors to no avail. I'm sure she tried other things to no avail. But Jesus came out of that coast. And I wonder why the Lord was there at that Pacific moment where they had a meeting. See, God comes by your way. A lot of times, I, I don't want him to pass me by. I look at these scriptures, and I'm thinking, God, this woman should have said, I tried, I'll bury my daughter, but I tried. And I see her going home, saying, baby, I tried, but he rejected us. Baby, I tried, but nothing worked. She said, I'm not going home. I ain't going home. I ain't going home. I didn't come to go back home without something. <laughs> I wish somebody get hold of that. I, I didn't come just to go home empty-handed. Somebody shout amen. I didn't come just to be, to say I tried, I'd make myself look good. I came for a healing. I came. Disciples crying, send her away. Twelve men crying. I'm sure they didn't look happy at her. I'm sure they looked on her with disgust. Somebody shout amen. I'm sure that there was situations and you could feel the friction and the tension. She said, I didn't come. I didn't come to get my feelings hurt. I didn't come to find fault. I didn't come to find some reason I can accuse him of something. I came because I need my daughter healed. Can I get a witness in this house? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Daniel, go to the book of Acts, chapter number 5. Amen. I want you to know something tonight. Amen. Brother, the devil tries to stop everything that God does. He'll stop you if you'll let him. Somebody got to have a made-up mind. Somebody got to have the tenacity of a bulldog. Somebody's got to be filled. Amen. Listen, strong people can grow weary. Young people can faint. That's the word of God. Isaiah 40 and 31. Amen. The young man faint. Amen. Those amen can grow weary. But there's a strength tonight. There's a courage inside you. There's the power of the Holy Ghost. I said the Holy Ghost. I believe we're getting ready to see the fire and the power back upon the people again to say devil I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and you by the authority of that name you gotta flee. You don't have any other choice. Put you up like that. Patty cake, patty cake, devil. We patty cake the devil so much. Somebody shout amen. God have mercy. I said, devil, I'm going to tell you something. You come out seven ways, but you got to, or you come out one way, you got to flee seven ways by the power of God. Let's take authority tonight in the name of Jesus. Let's set our foot down in the name of Jesus. Amen. Certain man named Ananias. That's not it. Verse number 20. What did I tell you? Sorry about that. Amen. Hallelujah. Chapter 5 and verse 34. Hallelujah. Verse 34. There stood up one in the council, a Pharisee by the name of Gamaliel, a doctor of the law which had the reputation among the, all the people and commanded to put forth the apostles a little space. Now listen. Amen. They was trying to shut the apostles down. They'd beat them. They'd kill some of them, put some of them in jail. They had threatened these. <laughs> and man, I mean, it was tough. Now, I'm going to tell you, it was tough to be a Christian then. It wasn't this popsicle Christian stuff. You was either genuine or you wasn't anything. You'd fall dead. Can I get a witness? Amen. Now, watch this. Next verse, please. And he said to them, ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do touching these men. For before the, these days rose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who were slain and all that were obeyed him were scattered and brought to nothing or naught. And after this was rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of taxing and drew away much people after him. And he also perished in all, even as many as obeyed him were dispersed. 
See, if this thing's in yourself, you'll fall apart out there somewhere. I always told people like this, they'll paint you a pretty picture in watercolor, but you put it in the rain and the storm, he'll, he'll run everywhere. Now I say unto you, refrain from these men. Let me tell you something. This thing's real, it's real. That woman knew Jesus was real and had something. Can I preach a while to you? Huh? Leave them alone. For this counsel or this work be of men, it'll come to what? It'll come to nothing. Oh, hallelujah. But if it be of God, you can't overthrow it. Somebody ought to shout yes. When that little woman walked down that dusty road that day, uh, amen, to run in contact with Jesus, uh, amen, it was real. Uh, it was of God. Uh, amen, that devil said uh, she'll die before you get home. Uh, but she said, Lord, I know uh, that the children eat the bread, uh, but I have a right. Uh, somebody shout tonight, uh, if you're an outcast, uh, you've got the right tonight. Uh, no matter who you are, uh, you got a right to a miracle. Uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ tonight. Somebody ought to give God a shout of praise. You got a right to live in peace tonight by the grace of God. Amen. You having fun, baby? No. Still waiting for a miracle, ain't you, honey? Still waiting for a miracle. God help us. I've been one of, I've prayed all night before. Got to praying one night. Went to church and I began to pray. Before I got there, I've been on a fast several days, four, five, six day fast. Going to Rowena. On the way down there, Brother Don, that's when I had that gray LTD Ford. I'd like to have that again. It's nice, boy. But anyhow, happened to turn the radio on. And the news came on. Perfect timing. And three men, convicts, had escaped from the Burksville jail and considered armed and dangerous. I go in there about 9 o'clock that night. Wasn't no street lights, no old security lights up at that time. It was just dark. You couldn't see your hand. And I start praying. Oh, God. And I never hear, not, I can hear people out there walking. It's them three men. They'd be trying to get my car. I'm never trying to pray. I'm having to fight them three convicts out there. I ain't seen a one of them, but I'm fighting to fight them. Somebody shout amen. And I got to thinking, if, I, if they'd really been out there and they hear me and I was screaming and hollering, they said, that's a crazy house. I'm getting away from that place. But anyhow, I prayed and I prayed. I mean, I interceded and I cried out to God and, man, there'd be, that old building would pop. There'd be a noise. You could hear things. About 3 o'clock in the morning, somewhere 2.30, 3 o'clock, I prayed, I'd prayed, and I'd prayed, and I'd prayed till there wasn't much more to pray about. I'd wrestle them spirits trying to hinder me from getting what, through to what I needed from God. Then there's a the church doors at that time were just inside trailer doors, all there was. There's cardboard. If a good sized man leaned up against them, he'd fall through them. And I'm thinking there's three of them dudes out there and they're, con and they're, con and they're armed. Anybody ever, had, anybody ever had a battle besides me like this? And I'm thinking. Devil, I'm tired of this. I'm going to go home just a little while. And 
by the grace of God, I opened that door. And I didn't know what was going to stare me in the face, but I said, devil, I refuse to run. I opened that door, and I started walking towards that car. That car was no further from here to Heather to me. Maybe a little from here to Brother Sean. But it looked like that car was two miles sitting down there. Before I walked out of that building, I reached and got my keys. And I had the door key. Do you know how hard it is? We ain't got this little push button stuff. We ain't got this start this thing thing. Do you know how hard it is to stick that key in that little keyhole and you got three convicts over your shoulder? Now, I know y'all think that's funny, but I'm going to take y'all down there some night. Somebody shout amen. And I'm telling you, it seemed like it took me 30 minutes to get that key in there, and then he didn't want to turn. I said, devil, I came for a blessing. I came to hear from heaven. And God spoke to me. He said, son, I've heard you, and I've kept you. Somebody shout yes. I don't know where them men was at, but I, they could have gotten 50 miles. I mean, I'm looking back now. But it wanted to hinder what I needed from God. See, the devil wants to hinder you from what you need from God. And no matter if it's words or if it's imagination, if it's fear, the devil says you're not good enough. It really don't matter what the devil says. If it be of God, you can't overthrow it. Can I get a witness in this house tonight? Somebody ought to give God just a shout of praise that you are on the winning side by the grace and the mercies of an almighty God. Would somebody give God one more shout tonight and let the devil know that greater is he that is in you than he that's in that world. If it be of God, I'm going to have it. There ain't a devil. There ain't a power. There ain't a force of hell that can stop God giving me what I have need of tonight. Somebody shout amen. First Samuel chapter 30, Daniel, as I close. First Samuel 22, excuse me. First, second Samuel 22, 2 Samuel 22, verse number 30. Tell your neighbor God's good tonight. Almost, almost ready for you, baby, okay? Okay. Somebody shout amen. I wonder how bad you want it. Brother Jason, you remember the day, son, when I put the handkerchief over your mouth and I said, you can breathe when you want to. He thought I was going to turn him loose when his face got red and his ears turned purple. I clamped down, brother. I meant it was up to him to he, if he wanted to breathe or not. Remember that? Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Michael, when I held some speakers for me, didn't you, brother? Less I'd ever wait. He got up the next morning, he wondered, why am I so sore? <laughs> you got to be determined. Somebody shot you, got to be determined. Say it again, you got to be determined. How bad do you want it? How bad do you desire it? How bad, oh, do you yearn for it tonight by the grace of God? See, I know it's real. I believe that that child and that mama was teaching us a lesson. See, there, was a time, there comes a troop out against you. But by thee, oh God, I've run through that troop. And by my God, I've leaped over a wall. Somebody shout amen. That means getting victory over your obstacles and your hindrances tonight. Amen. That baby laying there. Amen. Grievous. Everything wrong with it. It's not going to live. And mama don't know if she can live without her baby. I don't know what all the situation is. But oh God. 
I seek God sometimes too passionately. Amen. Without any effort. But oh God, I want to ring the prayer bells of heaven tonight. Amen. I remember the old saint of God singing, prayer bells of heaven, oh how sweetly they ring. Bearing a message unto Jesus our King. How many of when you begin to ring the prayer bells of heaven, something begins to happen by the hand of God. Can I get a witness in this house tonight? Come on, give God a shout of praise. Come on, give God a shout of praise tonight. Daniel, go to verse number 40 on this. See what it says. Same chapter, but verse 40. Thou hast girded me with strength to the battle. See, there's a battle going on right now. And I believe this with all of my heart. We're so close to that final breakthrough. How can I say it? Can anybody sense it tonight? That God's getting ready to do a quick work. Listen, there's going to come a revival. Please hear me tonight. To the people that's in this nation. This nation system is doomed. God done said it was. I'm not knocking our president. Thank God for him. But there's a system that God that'll never be saved. Now that makes some people very nervous. But this system, this world system, will never be saved. But God's going to pour His Spirit out upon flesh. Now listen to me. Thank God for anybody that will try to do what's right in in the political realm. But the revival is not going to come from the White House or the Republicans or the Democrats. It's going to come by somebody praying and touching heaven and calling on the name of Jesus. I'll have one of you on your feet shouting to that right there. Revival's coming like that right there. Revival's coming because you're getting a hold of God. Because you get a hold of God. Almost done here. See, we need a miracle tonight. Need a miracle. Amen. I refuse to let go of my miracle. And I, I told you that story about the convicts and myself. That was one of the longest nights or the six hours that I stayed there in prayer and prayed and cried and been on that fast. It seemed like a long time. And I believe when that woman was interacting with Jesus, it seemed like eternity was passing by because she didn't know what moment her daughter that devil would kill her to that point. Somebody shout amen. For thou hast girded me with strength to the battle. Them that rose up against me has thou subdued unto me. There's victory tonight in this house. There's a change in this place tonight by the power of God. Daniel, go back to 15, uh, Matthew 15. As I close tonight, that woman said unto Jesus, hallelujah. She said, Lord, even the dogs get the crumbs that falls from the master's table. He looks at her. He looks at her. He began to talk. And he sees something in her that he don't see in the covenant people called Israel. Somebody shout amen. He sees something in this woman that nobody else is striving for. How many of y'all want to strive for what you've got tonight? How many of y'all say, God, I won't turn it loose till you you do it for me? When pains of death seize on my soul, unto the Lord I cry. Jesus came and made me whole. I would not be denied. Can I get a witness in this house? You don't have to be denied your miracle tonight by the grace of God. Please hear me as I close. Next verse, please. She said, Lord, truth, yet dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. My God, it's something happened to Jesus that moment. He stopped. And he answered her and said, O oh, woman, Great is your faith. 
your faith, you're saved by faith. You're healed by faith. You stand by faith. You fight by faith. Amen. Great is your faith. And he said unto her, your daughter is healed or made whole. From that very moment, that grievous, demonic, critical spirit of hell left that baby. And she got up. And when mama got home, baby was all right. Because that woman would not take rejection. There's people in this building tonight, you said, I just feel like I've given up, but you haven't given up tonight because there's something in you that's greater tonight by the power of God. Please hear me. Please hear me as I close tonight. Thank you. Thank you. She gave a, let me say this. She gave a prayer request in the prayer room in our night. And can you give it again, sweetheart? Can you give that prayer request to these people out here? Can you tell them to pray for about something? And she took him hands and she moved him around. And every one of us stood in awe because God heard that child. By the grace of God, go to Granny there or Nana. For the power of God. Tonight, as they get ready to come to this music, there's somebody in this building. That God's touching you right now in the depths of your spirit. Right now, there's a spirit of infirmity battling people's bodies. It's got to go from them right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Somebody raise your hands and praise him. Come on, somebody raise your hands and praise him right now. Come on, raise your hands and love him right now. Come on, raise your hands and love him. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, raise your hands and love him. Come on, raise your hands and love him. In the name of Jesus, God, I come against this spirit of infirmity from this body by the power of an almighty God right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, lock me up in a prison. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, raise your hands and love him. Come on, raise your hands and love him, Sister Liz. I feel the Spirit of God moving for you right there. Come on, love him right now. Come on, worship him right now. In the name of Jesus. You can lock me up. In a prison and throw away the key deprive me of the food. But as long as I know Jesus, he said I could still go free. Somebody here going to go free. He said I could still go free. you love him tonight this altar is open if you've been feeling amen that you can't go on the spirit of hell trying to get you to lay down your sword amen to quit fighting tell the devil devil i won't quit tonight don't know how to quit gonna rise up again of the power of the holy ghost talk about my brother's body again tonight
God, for those kidneys. Lord, I still believe. God, that they can function again. I believe, God, that he can still come up with dialysis by the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe that tonight. God, I know that. As you've done for others, you can do it tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Tell me what kind Strengthen my brother's body tonight, Father. Would reach down his hand. Stand to your feet all of this building tonight. Would somebody begin to worship and say, God is mine tonight. So unworthy to live and not fit to kill. When a man on that cross put me in his will and said that. I want you to listen to me in this building as they play real softly. There are some people that's been praying about some things and you have not got your answer. But don't give up on your answer because it's there. How many believe that tonight? How many believe tonight that God is going to even start moving for you right, right at this very moment? Satan can try to postpone it. He can try to delay it. He can try to hinder it. But he can't stop it. He can't stop it. Somebody shout, he can't stop it. He can't stop. Amen. I'm going on with Jesus tonight by the power of God. Somebody ought to raise your hands and shout, it's my miracle. It's got my name on it. It's got my name on it. It's my victory. It's got my name on it. Can I get a witness one more time in this building? Amen. Somebody's been very wearied. You've been very wearied, but tonight... Your weary is going to stop and you're going to say, God, I put it in your hands and I trust you right now. Somebody give God a shout of praise. This altar is still open tonight. Somebody, amen, can I get somebody to walk in this front and say, devil, it's mine. I claim it and I stand on it by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Them children, they're born in the house of God. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Devil, I won't turn loose until I see the results of this thing. Put me in his way. Come on. And said that I, oh, I could see. Come on, talk to him tonight. God, I gotta have it. I gotta have that life again. I gotta feel life again. God, I got to feel a breakthrough. Oh. oh, tell me what Hallelujah. Oh, God, by the power of God. Come by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the power of God. God is mine. It's mine. It's mine tonight. By the power of God. It's mine. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Come on, praise him, church. It's ours. It's ours tonight. The 300 belongs to us tonight. It's ours by the grace of God. Woo! Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Come on, love him. I didn't come to take no for an answer. God, you said a smile. I claim it. Real softly. Six, eight months ago, I asked God for something. Something that's in His will. But after that, all of hell began to break loose. 
devil said it'll never happen. He'll never come to, 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 to fruition. He'll never come to his fullness. He'll never come to anything. Anytime the devil starts breaking out against you in a, in, in a special way, the victory's yours. Anybody believe that tonight? And when unusual things start happening, God's got a victory for you. How many believes that tonight? And you know what tonight? I possess the very thing that the devil and circumstances said you'll never have, but I possess it. But it didn't look like it for a day after. And I'd walk for miles. Just softly. I'd walk for miles a day crying to God for that. I'd walk for miles, miles. Would never sit down for, for hours off top of hours saying, God, it belongs to me. I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what circumstances say. It belongs to me because you put my name on it. You got to make this thing personal tonight. And you know what? I possess it by the power of God tonight. And I won't got news for you. I've run that devil away in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout yes in here. I want somebody to shout, it's mine tonight, and I claim it. Come on, shout it again. It's mine, and I'm going to stand on it by the power of God. Come on, tell you, it belongs to me by the power of the Holy Ghost. Does it? Does it? power of God. We claim Brother Jeff, he wouldn't come to church. We still say he's going to sit on that seat right there. Guess what he does tonight by the power of God? He sits on that seat by the power of God. Amen. I want you to turn around and tell somebody and agree with them. It belongs to me and it's mine. It's mine tonight, ever what it may be. You know what you have need of tonight. It belongs to me, the peace. I curse that torment spirit of hell. In the name of Jesus. Shake hands with about three or four people tonight and tell them the victory belongs to me tonight.